Let's talk about LinkedIn and whether holistic professionals such as coaches, healers, and intuitives should be using LinkedIn. Is it beneficial for their professional growth? So it's actually been a question that I've, I've you know, been, uh, that I've been asked often throughout the, the last 13 years that I've been teaching LinkedIn. Yes, I, well, I started using LinkedIn uh, about 16 years ago, a long time. Uh, and then after a few years later, when I was so active, my colleagues and friends were just asking me to teach them how to, how to use it well because they noticed what I was doing with it. And, and so I started teaching it about 13 years ago. And since then, I have taught a LinkedIn marketing class almost every year since then. So it, I've taught it, you know, to, um, I was counting the other day, something like 20 different audiences, including my own, but other audiences, um, many holistic service professional audiences. I've even taught it in the university setting. And I've taught it to, um, yeah, many groups and, and uh, uh, associations and, and things like that. Okay, so I took a survey of my audience who are mostly non-corporate professionals, people like coaches and healers, intuitives. And uh, I asked them, hey, do you think LinkedIn is helpful for you, those of you who have experience using it? Um, or those of you who aren't non-corporate prof professionals and have friends who are non-corporate professionals, do you, have you noticed whether it's helpful for them? So I took a survey. And thankfully, 151 people filled it out. And I wanted to summarize the results for you because a lot of you have been looking for, for the results of this. So let me go ahead and share the results here. Okay, so the first question is, do you sometimes look up people on LinkedIn to check their credibility and background? Now, if you didn't take the survey, you can feel free to comment below if you want to share your, your feedback. But here is the uh, here are the results, okay? 20% said often, 46% said sometimes, and 34%, about a third, said rarely or never. So the summary basically is that two-thirds two -thirds of non-corporate professionals go to LinkedIn at least sometimes to check out someone else's professional background. Now, you might say, George, but I, I'm not trying to reach my fellow colleagues, I'm trying to reach potential clients who could hire me for healing or for other holistic services. So is LinkedIn so useful for me? So this is a really important uh, shift, I think, that you should make about networking in, in overall, which is you have, you have the potential, obviously, if someone finds you on LinkedIn, they might be a potential client. I mean, you know, actually, there was a great quote um, somewhere down in the survey that said, business people need healing too, <laughs> okay? Or corporate people need healing too. Of course, corporate people, business people need intuitive coaching as well. A lot of corporate and business people are woo-woo, but they hide it until they see someone on LinkedIn who is willing to share the woo, share their, you know, whatever the woo is. It could be, you know, Reiki, astrology, um, energy healing, et cetera. And then they're like, oh, wow. Yeah, I, I'm actually into it, but I never, you know, and they secretly contact you. Okay. But, but actually, um, a lot of people don't realize that ever since 2017, so it's been at least five years, LinkedIn made a big shift from being about networking to being about content discovery. Con it's a content platform since 2007. They've been competing with Facebook since 2017. And it was a good move because as we all know, Facebook has gotten battered over the last couple of years in terms of reputation with various documentaries and things in the news and you know, whistleblowers and things. So a lot of people have started moving their connecting activity or just staying in touch activity from Facebook over to LinkedIn. And creating content, a lot of content has been produced on LinkedIn since 2017 when they really opened up the platform, encouraged a lot of people to create content. So yeah, videos, articles, um, images, slideshows, carousel posts, those are all being done on LinkedIn 
very frequently. So, uh, so the, the, the shift that I'm going to, so that's actually one little shift is to understand that LinkedIn has changed. A lot of you don't even realize because LinkedIn for most of its years were about, you know, corporate networking and, you know, HR and things, recruitment, things like that. But they, sh they shifted in 2017. And a lot of people have, have gone over there who are non-corporate, including a lot of my audience members. So um, that's number one. Number two is you have to understand that to get clients happens in two ways. One is a potential client sees your content somewhere and, and then they get opened up to the ideas and then they, you know, contact you, et cetera. Okay. That's, that's potential clients finding you via content. The other main way that people find you through, through uh, become clients of yours is through networking or word of mouth or referrals, right? So let me ask you this. Do you think colleagues might refer clients to you? Of course, of course, they refer clients for two reasons. One is they might have overflow. So uh, that can't take on any more clients or they can't take on clients at this time zone or, or you know, with this different kind of issue or whatever. So, so they refer people to you, number one, overflow, you know, number one. Number two, they refer clients to you because well, actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> One is overflow. Second reason is because a colleague might not, a client might not be right for a colleague. Um, not the right kinds of issues that they deal with, not the right kind of person. Um, could be other issues, like I said, time zone and location and, um, you know, personality, energy match, or whatever it may be, might not be right and then refer them to you. So what's more likely that someone's going to refer you clients if they see you less often? or if they see you more often, <laughs> okay? So basically, the more you are top of mind for your colleagues, the more likely you're gonna get referrals. Come on. So let me ask you again, is it a good idea to be on LinkedIn? I'll let you answer that question. I mean, I'm biased because I've been teaching LinkedIn forever. So of course you wanna be top of mind for your colleagues including on LinkedIn, and you know a lot of your colleagues are there. So let me, let me keep going in the, um, in the survey. I, I just shared the, the first number with you, which is that two-thirds of non-corporate professionals go to LinkedIn at least sometimes or often to check out uh, someone else's professional background. Um, okay, second question is, besides LinkedIn, where else do you look up someone's credibility, professional credibility? And the by far the top percentage was they look up someone's website, not by far, 88% say they look up someone's website. So of course, website is important. But 72% said they Google them to see what info is available. By the way, if you want to see the, the, the other data, you can, um, there should be a link uh, in the description of this video that goes to uh, more of the data. So, so summary, 72% of people Google someone's name to see what information is available about their professional background and credibility. Now, since Google is number one in terms of search, you know, uh, besides website, um, then then I, I I asked the next question. You know, I didn't I didn't even know this, but I asked the next. I'm glad I asked the question in the survey. If you Google someone's name or when you Google someone's name, do you see their LinkedIn profile? Like the does it usually pop up? And then do you go click on it? That was the question. When you Google someone's name, do you see and then click on their LinkedIn profile? Okay, so here are the results. 27% said usually, 53% said sometimes, 20% 20 said, 20 said rarely or never. So the summary is 80% of people after Googling someone's name, sometimes or often visits their LinkedIn profile. So again, <laughs> to just just to talk this through a lot of people when they're looking your credibility up they google you and 80 percent of the people who google you will see your linkedin profile and click through to it to check it out okay all right so that's good to know so then i asked if you use linkedin for the people in my audience who do what do you find useful about it and i'll share a couple of quotes with you i thought that was particularly interesting connection in a drama-free environment connection in a drama-free environment. I thought that was, <laughs> that was pretty cool. Yes, it's true. Uh, especially Facebook can have a lot of drama because people are 
feeling like they're like letting loose and like they can comment in ways that are sometimes mean or less thoughtful or whatever. Whereas you post on LinkedIn, people know that their professional profile is attached. So their comments are generally much more uh, kind, thoughtful, uh, and it makes the comments usually more, the discussion more interesting. So uh, let's keep going here. Another quote, I've had numerous people reach out to me via LinkedIn that, that led to clients and podcast interviews. Great. Another quote, LinkedIn's stodginess, simplicity, and general feeling of reliability versus Facebook, which is flashier and feels less reliable, or any other social media, which feels even further down the whole flashy, non-reliable end of things. Interesting. Another one, meeting other professionals, cheering them, cheering them on, and growing a sense of network. Okay, another one. People find me on LinkedIn and offer me opportunities to speak and create content for their platforms. And I also like letting people know when I, when I have content that I'm delivering. Next one, LinkedIn is a tool that showcases someone's education and work skills. It tells me a lot about their credibility and their personality. I think it speaks to their confidence and seriousness about their business. It establishes legitimacy. Remember, one of your most common uh, leads for potential clients is word of mouth or fellow colleagues who refer people to you, right? So, um, or it could be, that's usually what happens as your business grows, you start getting more and more referrals from, from colleagues uh, as your reputation grows. Okay, another one, positive spiritual messages put onto LinkedIn raises the vibration of the platform and helps those who are opening up their curiosity about such things find out more on a platform that they're already used to using. This is what I was saying. If you think LinkedIn is a bunch of corporate people, my question is, do corporate people have no spiritual life and they don't want healing and coaching? No, that's nonsense. In fact, they're probably, many of them are suffering because they haven't been willing to, they haven't been given the permission or giving themselves a the permission to open up to their authenticity, open up to more of their spiritual life or bringing more of those kinds of values into companies and businesses, which I believe we desperately need, you know, for a more, um, a world that has more well-being, right? Leadership that's better, et cetera. Okay, so, um, okay, let's keep going. The next question was asked of the people, some people took my survey were not non-corporate professionals. They were corporate professionals, but they were taking the survey on behalf of, to kind of like uh, answer it uh, in regards to how their non-corporate friends, what, you know, what their thoughts. Anyway, so these people, I asked them, hey, do you think non-corporate people like healers, intuitives should be on LinkedIn sharing their content like articles and videos? All right, 69%, 70% said yes, emphatically yes. And then 31% said maybe. Okay, great. And a couple quotes, business people need healing too. <laughs> okay, another one. I think basic presence on LinkedIn is necessary for everyone, even if you don't engage there much. It's essential for SEO, search engine optimization for your name, if nothing else. I agree. Google most people's names. If they have a LinkedIn profile, it show up at the top of the search results, okay? Their LinkedIn profile. Um, and another quote, healers need networking too. It's a beautiful summary. So um, again, I am biased. <laughs> even though the survey, I think, wasn't, well, you could argue that survey may have been biased because of the way I asked questions. Uh, but long story short, um, this, the survey results points to the fact that non-corporate professionals, by and large, believe that LinkedIn is useful if used effectively. It could be an, uh, uh, an ongoing source of potential clients, referrals, Etc. Um, personally, I wish everyone would update their LinkedIn profile and show up there at least occasionally, because then we would have more opportunities for each other. It's it's networking or what I like to call net caring. Okay, so if you are interested in learning LinkedIn, there are plenty of resources. You can just Google it. Uh, YouTube videos about it. Um, if you want to le learn it from me, which I think I have a unique perspective about marketing, authenticity, and I have 
trained thousands of non-corporate professionals on how to use LinkedIn. If you want to learn it from me, I do have an online course about it, and I am, uh, I've just made a major update of the LinkedIn strategy and course. I mean, it's, the, it's, a, it's a very much the same strategy over the years, but I've, I've, um, I think I'm, I've taught it more clear now than I have ever before, and I'm also now including using LinkedIn company page and ads because now I'm using LinkedIn ads on a regular basis. It's an alternative, a great alternative to Facebook ads or Instagram ads or Google ads or et cetera. So LinkedIn ads is actually easier to use than Facebook ads. And it has targeting capabilities that are in some cases better than Facebook. So for example, on LinkedIn, you can use ads to target members of groups. You can't use Facebook ads to target members of Facebook groups, but you can use LinkedIn ads to target members of LinkedIn groups people interested in various different things or professions or um, industries or, or uh, associations and just personal interests, lots of groups on LinkedIn, tens of thousands of people with different personal interests like yoga or healing or et cetera, things like that. So if you're interested, uh, you could take my online course about link, how to use LinkedIn, especially uh, geared towards non-corporate professionals. And uh, maybe I'll see you there. But Either way, I hope you find this video um, inspiring to get you brushing up your LinkedIn profile and reconnecting there to your colleagues in a, in a more of a net caring way where you know that if you, if you care about others professionally and you comment on their things, you are much more likely to be top of mind. And therefore being top of mind means you're much more likely to be referred clients and other opportunities that you would want. So, I hope this helps and uh, any questions about, about what I, the survey I took, please go ahead and comment below. Any questions about LinkedIn, I hope you'll take my course on it because it has everything in there and it answers all the questions that, that I've gotten about LinkedIn. Um, but if you have anything quick, you can comment below. I'll, I'll try to answer quickly as well. All right, uh, have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.